The men and women that we honor each and every year at MCC Middle School are our neighbors, fathers, daughters, Little League coaches, and teachers. Some have endured great hardships, separation from family, and drastic altered lifestyles. Some have experienced the horrors of war. They answered the call to arms. All sacrificed something so that we could enjoy the freedoms we have today. Simply put, they are ordinary people who have accomplished extraordinary things. They are our veterans. Each and every one of them have a story, an account of sacrifice, courage, service. One such story is that of a larger-than-life figure, Mr. Dalton Holt. Today, we could find 84-year-old Dalton Holt in his wood shop along the quiet shores of Gun Lake, just north of Fountain, Michigan. Aside from being a draftsman for 20 years at New Product Corporation in the die cast shop, a lifelong outdoorsman and an amazing inspirational teacher at Ludington Middle School for 20 years, Dalton Holt served this nation proudly during World War II in the United States Navy and fought in the largest naval battle in the history of modern warfare. Dalton Holt Humble's beginnings began on February 18, 1926, as he was born in Oak Lawn Hospital in Marshall, Michigan. Marshall, Michigan, had, uh, at that time it was a population of around 5,000, 5, 6,000 people. I spent most of my time, because my brothers are all older, right? 13 years old, the nearest okay. one. And I was more or less you know, left to find a my own amusement, and uh, we, I did a lot of fishing and hunting and so on. Uh, hunting is uh, one of the things that uh, is very prevalent in our household. Uh, from a standpoint at that time, uh, it was a source of food. But I was having problems in school, uh, and uh, it got to a point where uh, I disliked it so much that I. Uh, I just up and quit, and uh, it was a, was an enjoyable place. And uh, so I was a, at that time I was uh, uh, 17 years of age, and so I took the opportunity to join the Navy. The bus picked it up at Marshall, and I figured I thought I was going to go to Detroit and come home. Well, what they did. From Detroit, I went to Great Lakes Training Station, and uh, it's um, and that's when I started my nine weeks boot camp. Boot camp was um, uh, was not easy, and and I can understand why it wasn't easy for what they were do going to do, but I'd never experienced this before, and my biggest concern was uh, hoping that I get through it without any problem. And so I, this uh, chief petty officer said, you don't have to worry about it. He said, this is going to be the worst part of your entire military service. You get through here, you'll be all set. You can handle anything. I was out of, they shipped me down to Norfolk on the Storm King. And the Storm King, uh, out through the Panama, I mean, it's a whole new world all together. It's just, uh, 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 when we muster in the morning, I said, Holt, I go to bus so and so. The next thing I know, I'm board the fence all day. And they didn't, they didn't mess around with me. They, uh, I was on the move from uh, Detroit right on through. I came on as, by comparison, there was a sign on board that uh, danger, well, that danger is where the elevators are. And that's where they take the planes from the elevator, put them on the flight deck. And there was a, 
that sign was, uh, from where I was looking at, <coughs> at the quarter deck, it looked rather small. Uh, when I got down to the elevator, and there were eight foot letters. It's just, just huge. It's just, and that's that's a jeep carrier. They were to supply air power to the who's ever going to be on the other engagements with the battlefield and so on. On October 25th, 1944, the U.S. Navy and Imperial Japanese Combined Fleet fought for control of the Philippine Islands in what is considered the largest naval battle in the history of warfare. Dalton Holt, on board the USS Fanshawe Bay, found himself in the midst of this fierce battle. And I didn't, really didn't care for what, what I saw. It was, uh, you know, this, uh, where we lost a, a number of men was at Kamikaze. Uh, we thought it was Kamikaze, but it's a bomber. Uh, came down and dropped a bomb in our after elevator, which I thought it was maybe 20 feet away from. But it went through the elevator down into the lower compartments. And the people down stationed down in that area, that's, that's where all the, the damage was taken. And so it, uh, it didn't go all the way through, but it uh, exploded on a hangar deck. And, uh, so it was, uh, I didn't know enough to be scared. And I knew what scared meant. But uh, it was, uh, I, if, a week or so after that, I was having nightmares of these planes flying in and dropping things and so on. But uh, it's all part of the program. Uh, it's just, uh, they're not, they're not picking on you. It's, this is what has to be done. The water has to be taken out of those compartments. And somebody has to take the, the casualties from that compartment. And uh, they're not picking and choosing each other. You do this. And it was uh, a real rude awakening as to what life was all about in wartime and Navy. And uh, so it was, uh, I have to admit that uh, the school desk looked pretty good after that. <laughs> As the fierce battle of Samar continued in the Philippines, Dalton Holt was on board the USS Fanshawe Bay that was providing air support. As Dalton witnessed in the horizon, the USS Lowell, formerly the USS Midway, became the first ship to sink as a result of a kamikaze attack. In result, 143 sailors were killed, while 434 were rescued. Mm -hmm. Uh, the low went down, and we saw it go down, and uh, it was that was not pleasant either. You could, they were trying to put fires out and so on, and uh, they'd be, there were three explosions. One where the bomb hit, torpedo hit, the big part, uh, and then that went into the uh, fuel compartment, and then. The other went into uh, uh, ammunition, and he, uh, this I never will forget. It. Uh, looked over there, and this fire hose was we were that close. The fire hose went up in the air, and here's a man on the end of that hose, and just uh, so as a, a rude awakening that. Uh, they were serious. But these things I did not like in the beginning, and I don't want to do it again. But I learned that you have to respect your fellow man, dead or alive. And you have to do it with the same reverence. I don't want any, any stretch of imagination put myself in a boasting situation, but I am saying this, that when I came home, 
I was a lot better person than when I left home. So I, I grew up in a hurry. And it's just that uh, if you don't work together, you're not going to be together. And it's not, uh, there are no heroes. There are people doing a job and if you uh, are wounded, uh, that, that to me, I was not. But when I see other people on it, to me that was a tragedy. I, uh, I went through that and I came home, uh, you might say unscathed, but I had, uh, uh, I did a lot of learning and growing up and so on. The people aboard ship who had never met before in my life, they didn't know me from a row of trees and I didn't know them. So you have to make a situation. Some, you know, this is not the person you should be associating with. And then you find the one that there are, then you have a camaraderie. And with that, you have somebody you can lean on. It's going through the same situation, age-wise. And so it's a, a very much of a learning experience. Nice. And that's not what I wanted. I didn't know I was going to do that. That's the way it turned out. Dalton Holt and the entire crew of the USS Fanshawe Bay received the Presidential Unit Citation in addition to five bronze battle stars for the heroic efforts in the battle off of Samar near the Philippines. After the war, Dalton received his high school diploma and later returning to Western Michigan University to graduate. He spent the next 20 years as a draftsman and later was inspired to become a teacher by his wife. As quoted by friend and colleague Jim Quinlan, he said of Dalton, I quote, he ran one heck of a survival program at O.J. Junior High Educational Camp. Dalton taught the kids how to keep warm in a ditch, edible foods in the wild, how to build a fire, shoot a flintlock rifle, throw a tomahawk, build a hasty shelter, and all done with the typical Dalton Gusto. Teach these children the best way you know how and encourage them to learn. Go in with the attitude I want to learn the subject that I'm working for. What, my, what is my goal? Whatever that goal is, go for it. I was the only one in the family that was in the service. I was the only one that got a college education. I was the only one that went into teaching. And uh, it's because of the things that have happened and the people I came in contact with. But what I've done in the past, I hope that I'm going to be remembered with good thoughts rather than bad thoughts. And uh, yes, uh, the camaraderie of my fellow men. That'd be about it. The love of my fellow men, I guess. Loving my fellow man. Where do we find such great men? Dalton Holt joins the Navy at age 17, sails the world, defends democracy, obtains a college education, woodworker, draftsman, outdoorsman, a lifelong teacher. He has served his nation well, and Dalton Holt has given more than he has taken, and therefore he has earned the right to be called a great American hero.